Andre Brett Andrews on and very special guest in this studio, Skyler Gray. Did you hear me say studio? Because I was I was yeah. thinking about saying your name already, so I added the sk. You like to think ahead. I do. I'm Haste impatient makes man. waste, man. Um, so, <laughs> hey, real quick, you're from uh, just outside of Madison, Wisconsin, right? Yep. Born and raised in Milwaukee, baby. No way! What up, Wisconsin? Yeah. I love it. So, um, we we got that going for us already. That's great. So, my first question, I guess, has to be, how does, because I know what it's like in Wisconsin, how, how does how does a kid from the suburbs of Madison end up writing songs for Eminem and Dr. Dre and, come, I mean, how, how, take me from A to B here, because okay. it doesn't seem like it connects, man. It was a Because I don't know Dr. Dre. It was Dre. a long journey. <laughs> um, well, I started performing when I was six, so I knew I was going to do music for my whole life and eventually moved to Los Angeles when I was 17. Dropped out of high school. And I kind of went out there blindly. I didn't know anyone, but... That's gotta be scary at 17. Did you go by yourself, or were you with... I went by myself. My mom came a couple times, but she didn't do the move with me. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I just hustled, you know? I played in bars and whatever okay. I could do. See, I got you, but... I've been to L.A. a million times, and everyone who's ever parked my car, served me coffee, shined my shoes, all are trying to hustle into this business. Mm -hmm. So there had to be, there had to be someone you met. I mean, one key moment that really put you on on the map and made other people realize, hey, this kid's got something special. Well, I got signed to a record deal about a year and a half after I moved out there, and that was through Lincoln Park, the guitar player in Lincoln Park kind of discovered me, I guess. So you were performing some little, like, tiny hole in the wall and he walked in, or...? It was more like I, uh, I found an attorney through a guy I met in the hallway, and then the attorney introduced me to my manager, and my manager introduced me to Lincoln Park. Okay. So, so this all came through in a seedy hallway somewhere weird. Yes, in a you... weird studio hallway. Some guy just recommended an attorney, and it all kind of started there. So, so rather than trying to get really good waitering gigs at like the Ivy in Hollywood, what you need to do is just hang out in weird hallways for people. That's, <laughs> I that's, think if that's we're your giving advice. advice. If we're giving advice here, I think the number one thing I would say is be really good. Yeah, so don't suck is the first part. <laughs> I mean, because then, then all right, so people let me, let, react let me to you properly. Okay, let me let me follow let, let me follow this down now. So number one is don't suck. Yes. Number two is hang out in hallways. No. Oh, okay. Well, no, well, no, no, what no. What did I skip? Oh, number two is get a lawyer and then hang out in hallways. I think <laughs> just uh, having good, you know, people sense, which I didn't actually have yeah. then, but, you know, knowing what people are actually going to be valuable to you. And, uh -huh. and it seems like a lot of people who, like you, who kind of started out in the kind of writing and producing and kind of behind the scenes thing and now are moving towards... That's not actually how I started. Oh, God. You got my story wrong. I screwed it up. So I actually started as an artist. Okay. So I put an album out in 2006. Yes, but you had a different name. My name was Holly Brooke. See, I knew. I did I came research. out with a song called Where'd You Go with Fort Minor. Right. 2006. Which I love. That's a great song. That was a big song. But my solo career did not uh, follow up that success. Um, so... And that I, prompted a name change? Well, eventually it did. Um, so everything kind of fell apart after Where'd You Go because there were a lot of things that kind of just went wrong suddenly. Mm -hmm. It's like the stars were all aligning and then suddenly they just kind of got all messed up. So mm -hmm. um, I asked to leave the label and it took me two years to get off the label. And in that period of time, I was unable to legally release music oh, because yeah. I was trapped on a label. So you probably had all this stuff building up that you wanted yeah. to do and you couldn't do anything. Exactly. That's probably the most frustrating feeling in the entire it's world. It's the isn't most it? frustrating thing ever. And it led to me having writer's block, me losing myself, not knowing who I was anymore. And I was living in LA. I went broke because I couldn't make a living. And uh, I ended up moving up to Oregon, funny enough. Whoa. Where in Oregon did you live? Southern coast. Okay. Yeah. I'm not going to say exactly where. Okay. Okay. That's cool. <laughs> but um, yeah, I lived on the southern coast of Oregon just in the woods in a cabin. Because I thought, I really need to figure out who I am and where, what my place is in this world. And I think the best way to do that is to live alone, take care of yourself, become really independent. And um, that's exactly what I did. I even got a studio of my own 
so that I could record my own songs and not have to rely on a producer. So when you say you were living on your own in a cabin, I, th here's what I'm picturing. I'm picturing like a log cabin with like no technology in it. Am I am I off? No, you're pretty much on. It wasn't a log cabin because it was a cabin that was made to look like a fire lookout or something so that it didn't appear to be a cabin. Oh I don't God, even know if it was crazy. legal. It wasn't even like a legal... Did you have like a bathroom and a kitchen and everything? Or There was a sink and uh, there was a toilet, but it was outside. And it was an outhouse. Well, yeah, basically. <laughs> so, I bet I had to go outside in the middle of the night, you know, walking through the woods to oh get to my, my little God. bathroom. Did you meet any bears? I didn't <laughs> meet a bear up there, no. But um, I saw signs of mountain lions everywhere. I saw some tracks. Um, yeah. So it got a little freaky sometimes. Man. I actually had to park my car so far away from where I lived to uh, because it was a sand dune that I lived on. And so my car wouldn't make it up the sand what dune. Did you, what did you eat? I'm, I, I mean, I, I like drove is, into town. I feel like this is... Uh, all these rich people with their with their reality shows that are boring the crap out of me. I don't care about Paris Hilton's angry assistant. I want to see a, a reality show of you living in the woods. Well, that's the problem with Hollywood, I think. Yeah. It makes everybody think that reality TV really is reality, and it's not. There's a lot more out there. Oh my god, that's um, crazy. That, <laughs> I gotta tell you, like, that they don't they don't include that in the press package that they send you when you're about to interview somebody. And I never thought that we'd have a conversation about you living in the woods and s seeing mountain lion tracks and going outside. Yeah, I actually carried pepper spray with me. I had a knife. I had. Um, Do you have an Indiana Jones hat? No, but I had awesome. a mask that I wore on the back of my head just because I heard some folklore that if you have like <laughs> eyes coming out of the back of your head, the cat won't attack you. Oh my god, that's crazy! Wow. Okay. So I don't know how to. I don't know. I don't have any idea what to ask you next. Well, I can. I can just go from there. Okay. So I had this recording studio in my cabin. And, uh, but you didn't have okay, so you didn't have a toilet in your cabin, but you had a recording studio. Well, because what ha there was a few little buildings on this property. Yeah. And so the cabin that I lived in, I didn't have the studio in. It was just a wood stove, a sink, and a bed, one room. And then there was a bathroom. And then down the hill, down the sand dune, was another uh, building, and it had a little bit better electricity. Mm -hmm. And so I set up a little studio in there. It was little. But it was good enough to get the job done, you know, recording vocals and stuff. So I taught myself Pro Tools. I learned how to engineer all my own stuff and then um, recorded a ton of music. And I had s kept my publisher from when I signed with Linkin Park. Mm -hmm. So I went to New York uh, one day and just said, okay, I have all this new music. And I, f I feel like, you know, I got over my writer's block. I feel a lot stronger now and more independent. And I know for a fact that I need to make a living in the music industry yeah. because it's the only thing I know how to do. So what do I do now? And she said... You'd probably think... be pretty good on Survivor, though, too, if the music thing didn't work yeah. out. Yeah, I could probably do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but she said, I think you need to meet Alex the Kid. And mm. he's the producer that, you know, I've done all these songs yeah. with. Yeah. And I at first was like, eh, I don't know about that. He's hip hop, whatever. But then she played me uh, Airplanes, mm -hmm. which was the big song, mm -hmm. and that was. But she played it to me before it came out, and just from hearing it, I knew right away.